Welcome to today's 3D print. Time for another printer. Thanks to GearBest, this is the ANET A4. It's a Delta printer from ANET that's supposed to be a fast assembly. So like the CR10 and whatnot, it should be largely assembled. We shall see. Stay tuned. Well, this is the ANET A4. I was going to say they lied, and I still think they lied, because we have vastly different opinions on what fast assembly is. <laughs> um, technically, it's not a full kit. Uh, the extruder is mostly assembled. The hot end is partially assembled. The base with all the electronics is fully assembled, and I guess everything plugs into that base. Um, Here's, it's a heated build plate. I'm guessing this is the top. Acrylic, nice and thick though. I'm guessing these are the verticals to hold the thing together. I'm guessing these are smooth rails and these slide along it. Not entirely sure. I'm guessing these are the three units that slide up and down. There we go. They are 3D printed. I mean, they're nicely 3D printed, though I guess okay 3D printed, but uh, they are 3D printed. Everything else appears to be metal. These are 3D printed, whatever they are. And ANET has a fetish with their 3D printed spool holders. I've broken many of them, although this one appears to be a little bit more solid, so maybe this one will hold out better. But I keep breaking these darn things. They love their 3D printed spool holders. Uh, looks like it is an all metal hot end, but it's that same fugly hot end that was on the E12 when I kept jamming on me, so we'll see if this performs any differently. Uh, 3D printed blower. That goes into here. Oh, it looks like it's just a press fit, and a good press fit too. Okay. Hmm. Nice metal effector head. Uh, it is a metal brackets for the cooling fans. You have a cooling fan for the hot end. They should have just uh, used a 30 millimeter fan. There's no reason to use this gigantic 40 millimeter fan here. Um, although with their inefficient hot end where it doesn't actually thread through the, uh, the cooling block, it might be a good idea to use a bigger fan. A blower looks like your typical 40 millimeter blower. It's smaller than 40 millimeter, but you know it takes up the space of a 40 millimeter, and that blows on your nozzle. Okay, this is all metal, and looks like pretty tight tolerances too. Actually, nice tolerance, not bad. It could be slightly better, but this should probably handle flexibles okay. U.S. plug, bag of screws. They do appear to be well marked. Uh, tells you what size and how many and roughly what it is. So this one says screw washer. Doesn't say what it's for. This one says pillar uh, screw M310 six pieces. So it does tell you what they are. Looks like typical springs. I'll probably replace them with some Creality style springs. Why not? I have them. Toolkit. Not that many tools, so it should be pretty easy. So we'll spool holder. Hopefully this mounts up top, same as on the E12, the exact same piece. Um, I gotta give them credit, they like reusing parts. Your nippers, they give you the nice ones that open up wide. Um, screwdriver, two screwdrivers. Interesting, comes with a little screwdriver in here and this big flippable screwdriver that always comes with all the A-nets, as well as a few Allen keys, some zip ties, a ruler, which is a nice touch. It costs them nothing, but it's a nice touch. A uh, sample of PLA, your Bowden tube, your end stops and mounts, it looks like. Are they sticky taped on? Oh, that's wire management. Okay. Belts. Looks like the same belts they always use. They look like they're just rubber, but we've already confirmed that there are actually reinforcements inside there. Uh, SD card, probably the same generic one they include with all the other printers they have. Yep, says 8 gigabyte. Who knows if it actually is or not, but um, it just says 8 gigabyte. And your compression fitting coupling for the 
top of the hot end. Um, not top of the hot end, top of the um, cold end, the heat, the heat sink. And that's it. I assume the instructions are on the SD card. This is complicated enough that I am going to stop here and read those instructions because I have never built a Delta before. So we will see. And oh, also the effector arms, they are carbon. They all appear to be tight because I know these are super critical that these be exactly right. So hopefully these are all exactly the same height. They are not. Well, maybe they are. I don't know. I can't really tell. I don't know. Hopefully they are the same height. Because I know that if they are not, you will have a fun time. Actually, they do appear to all be the same length. At least visibly, I can't tell a difference. So hopefully they are assembled correctly. And we will go from here. I'll be back after I read the manual. RTFM. Read the, you know what, manual. <laughs> there are no instructions. There is a video, and I will admit it is a fast assembly. At least I guess as fast as a Delta in a small package is going to be. Most of the grueling work is in here, of course, you know, all the wiring and plugs and getting all that stuff done. But otherwise, it is, it does look like on the video a relatively fast assembly. The video is only eight minutes long. I figured they cut about two thirds of it out, so. I figure the guy there did it in about 30 or 40 minutes. I'll be taking my time and explaining things to you guys as I do it, since this will be my first built Delta. I do have that FL Sun Delta, but I got that assembled. This one I'll actually be assembling. And we shall go from there. The first step is to put the feet on the bottom of the printer, and then these rods are actually threaded on both ends. So they will slide through this entire base, which is metal, by the way. And then they will pop out of the acrylic here. Uh, it's just the smooth on top. And you will make them flush with the top of the acrylic using these to help it stay flush. And then these, this is your guides that they slide on. This is the what the belt attaches to and slides up and down your linear guides. And then this is a clamping unit that has the mount for the pulley, the passive pulley. It also mounts the limit switch here. And then these, after using the acrylic base and these to line everything up, clamp down and hold it in place. So apparently they're using the combo of the three to line up and lock everything in place. We'll see how well that works. I do wish these were actually molded parts, but um, they are printed in the correct direction for the strength of what they're going to be used for. So we shall see. I don't anticipate it being too much of a problem. The quality on the other hand, we'll see. But I'll give it a fair shot. I'm open game for it. The effector arms do appear to be straight. Everything does appear to be here. And we shall begin the assembly. I did get my camera rig set up finally. That's one of the reasons I paused for a minute there. And why you don't hear the printer anymore. It's a bad print, but I, I know what to fix. The, for some reason, there's supposed to be three legs to a GoPro mount. And for some reason, this one is disconnected from the other two. So air printed. I don't know why I did that. No idea why I did that. It was intact when I put it there. I must have used a cut tool and accidentally cut a portion of it away without realizing it, although I don't know how it would have cut the other two arms, but whatever. Anyway, this rig allows me to mount multiple cameras to the hot shoe of my Lumix. So now I have a wide angle video and a time lapse going simultaneously while I do this as well. So later on I can access that content to use it to fill in because this is going to probably take an hour and a half, two hours to assemble. Uh, I'm going to be taking my time. I, if I went straight through it, I could probably do it in less than an hour, but I'm going to take my time to explain each thing to you guys, explain steps to you guys as I go through it. And uh, so it's probably going to take me two or three hours with all the recording. And this will allow me to say, poof, time lapse. And you'll be able to see the whole thing get assembled. <laughs> so we shall go from there. Stand by. Is it too much to ask to get a working printer today? Just one working printer. Even Creality failed me today. The Ender 2 didn't work. This is supposed to have three holes at each of these points instead of one. So there should be six holes here, here, and here. A large hole for the rod, a small hole to screw this on to cap the rod, and then these two holes to screw into these blocks. 
I suspect Anet changed the design because those holes are not there at all. So my gut tells me they modified this to simply use these to align everything up. I'm not sure what I feel about that. But I'm going to try anyway because I'm tired of not having a working printer. So stay tuned. We're going to make this thing work if I have to put a rocket engine in and light it. <laughs> well, it's been 24 hours. Almost 24 hours. And I finally got this thing going. Um... The instructions are bad. Really, 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 really bad. Um, they changed the way they assembled this. Um, it, in the instructions, there are six holes at each corner. You have these acrylic pieces that act as caps over the holes that the smooth rods pass through the acrylic plate to keep them level, and then you bind these in place, and two screws go through here. Um, they changed that to the acrylic plate just sits on top and is held in place by the screws going into this. They don't mention that this has capture nuts. They don't mention which way this goes. I put them on backwards the first time. And then they also don't mention which way these goes. I put them on backwards as well. That's why I couldn't get this thing to home. It would go down instead of up. It's because I had this over here. I had this upside down. No, I was not going to change that. <laughs> so I just drilled a second hole and moved it over here and reversed the belts and now it's working. Um, Oh my god, the quality control is bad. I was missing a screw for this belt lock, and it's a 45 millimeter long screw. The closest I had was an extra bed leveling screw that was 30 millimeters. I was able to make that work, um, which is good because I have lots of extra screws, but nothing 45 millimeters long. <laughs> um, all right, now that I've gotten past the absolutely non-existent directions, the directions that were wrong, by the way, the limit switches were also in the wrong spot. They were all rotated 120 degrees. So for anybody who might be fortunate or unfortunate enough to get this printer, it is left X, right Y, rear Z. The limit switches are marked, and that's the way I had to do it to make it work. So make sure you're... Your belt lock is on the left hand side, so make sure that drilled hole is on the left hand side. See, the problem is in the beginning they showed a picture of the bearing flush with the top here, so I put it in the direction that made the bearing flush with the top. But then later in the video they show that mounting on the left, not the right. So I don't know what's going on with that. They don't mention this anywhere in the direction, but the screws up top here, there's capture nuts that slide into openings here, so you have to put the capture nuts in. One of my blocks was printed badly, and I I actually had to gouge out with a knife and a screwdriver to make the opening big enough to accept the capture nut, but I was able to make that work. Um, anything else? You use the same crap hot end, so you actually cannot extract filament. The only way to change filament is to simply feed new filament in, or you have to unscrew the compression fitting on there, snip the filament, and push the excess filament through, and then you can feed new filament in. But because of the way they do their all metal hot end and heat break, you cannot extract filament. Once it comes out of the Bowden tube, there's a slight kink where it's not quite going straight. And the filament expands, so it cannot fit back through the compression fitting. It's one way. And they even acknowledge this in their directions when they show you how to change filament. Uh, so the easiest way to change filament is to pop off this um, connection here. Um, snip the filament, have the hot end heated up, push the filament through with an Allen key to give you a little gap, put this back in. Then just feed new filament and let it push the old filament out. That's the easiest way I've found to make it work so far. Or you got to snip it down here. It is surprisingly quiet, although the hot end fan is the noisiest fan of the whole thing. The motors and everything are surprisingly quiet. Um, that was weird. The display kind of went crazy. Okay, the display's not working now. <laughs> but it's still printing, I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, a net, a net, a net. So it does work. I do not suggest buying this printer. No. Uh, um, I give a lot of leeway to people, but this printer is not ready for the market it's aimed at for beginners. This is, I'm experienced and this thing was a nightmare. <laughs> and it was a fast assembly. 
Um, I do not suggest buying this thing, not until they have a, a Rev 2 of this with these things fixed, and we'll see. Um, uh, the quality looks okay so far. I will, of course, come back and tell you what kind of quality I get out of it, give you my full review and all that, but as of right now, this is a don't buy. Stay away from this thing.